What is blockchain technology? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Hey guys, I'm Najib Khan, I'm an author, I'm an innovation strategist, and let's just jump right into it. All right, now before we talk about blockchain, let's talk about the concept of networks. First, we have centralized, then we have decentralized, and lastly, we have distributed. So centralized, so let's take a look at centralized. So the way it works is there is a center node. And that center node could be a website that you're watching or a video that you're watching, such as this. And what ends up happening is all the other external nodes that are connected to the central node are perhaps users. In this case, they're looking at this content. Now, if the center node gets hacked or goes down, then it renders everything else useless. So that is the centralized. Let's put this aside. Next is the decentralized. Over here, you have a few more central nodes, but if one or two of them gets lost, then the entire, basically everything is get, gets lost except a handful of points. So that is decentralized. Distributed, on the other hand, is if one node goes down, because there are so many different connections, if one node goes down, then everything else pretty much stays alive or a cluster of it maybe will go away, but everything else will still be alive. So the concept of blockchain relies on the distributed network. Now, the way it works is quite simple. If I was to send money to, let's just say another person, right, so you have two people, and if I were to send money from one person to the other person, what ends up happening is currently the person A, so if that's me, my bank would have to send money to that person's bank and then this person would have access to it. So that's how it currently works. Now, with blockchain and applications built on top of blockchain, what it allows us to do is to send money, it allows me to send money from one person to the other person directly and the transaction that happens gets recorded. And that recording gets tied and gets programmed into a blockchain. So if this person also sends more money or another money or something else to another person, that also gets recorded into a chain. And all of it together forms a blockchain. Now, how is this safe? What's the advantages of it? And this is where it comes in. The thing is, let's just say if it's your private information or a record of a deed of a house, what ends up happening is that this record gets, gets recorded all the way through. So if you're taking a look at a diamond, and if you want to know if it's ethically sourced from a conflict-free zone, you could see where it started to where it ended up in your hands and make sure it's accurately recorded through blockchain technology. And with blockchain technology, in order for you to change one piece of element, if you want to change it from the very beginning, you have to change everything, all the subsequent blocks or chains and if you kind of refer back to the distributed network that I showed you, in order for you to change everything, it's almost impossible. So that is the benefit of blockchain, right? That all the records gets kept. The advantage is, of course, it allows you to build a whole bunch of platforms and transactional components on top of it. One being finances. You might have heard of Bitcoin or Ether for Ethereum. You can transfer the currencies. The other is you can transfer deeds to properties. The other thing is you can do smart contracts where as soon as the contract is finished, the person gets paid out. The other thing you could do is you can raise crowdfunding or do market predictions. There's so many different applications for a decentralized platform. Now, blockchain technology, who does it help and who does it not help? Well, here's the thing. For people who don't have access to resources or who want to have more control, that's who it helps. So if you think about someone who's in rural India or Bangladesh, what ends up happening is they may not have access to a bank or identity management system. But with blockchain, it allows you to make sure that it is them speaking and not someone else. That's one. The person who it or the entity that it does impact is the middleman. If you think about it for banks, Unless if they bring enough value, it's going to impact banks a lot. And also other, well, banks is largely for financial transaction, but if you look at other applications as well. The issue of provenance for tracking, tracking ethically sourced diamonds, this is the key because you can actually track it with a blockchain technology and not rely on... Now, what's the difference between 
blockchain and Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin actually uses blockchain. So if you think about it, a good way to think about it is think of Bitcoin like an email or an email address, whereas blockchain is like the internet. With the internet, you have so many different applica applications and uses just like email, but it's not limited to it. And that's kind of what Bitcoin is. So Bitcoin to blockchain is what the email is. To Again, the advantages of Blockchain is endless from supply chain to governments, identity management, financial transactions. It is limitless and we're just starting the scene of growing and using blockchain technology. One of the more promising blockchain technologies built on the Ethereum blockchain. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Najib Khan and if you want free bitcoins, click on the link below. If you want to get more in-depth resources about blockchain or even Bitcoin or even innovation reports, click on the link below or go to bitcreate.com.